So it's been about a week since the Hamilton Pro Shot aired on Disney Plus, and since then my feed has been filled with praise for the Pro Shot. The idea that one of the most popular, most exclusive musicals ever is now available to the masses at under $10 for the whole month for the whole family, I think that's a major triumph in theater accessibility. I've also been seeing a lot of questions and ideas, confusion, and some anger toward the Broadway community from the fans. We're all asking. Hamilton was so good. Why can't I stream every Broadway show? Every show should release a pro shot after it closes. That way everyone can see it. We are in a pandemic and Broadway is closed for the next year. Release the footage, you selfish <laughs> clowns. I need musicals now or I'm gonna lose it. That last one was me in the shower right now to no one in particular. So today we're going to break it down and deep dive into the world of professional musical theater recordings and why they're so difficult to make happen. If this is your first First time seeing my face. Hi, my name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. We're not like a crazy cult or anything. We just like sing a lot of show tunes and make references that no one understands. Question of the day, if you could have a pro shot of any musical, what would it be? Let me know in the comments down below. Personally, I'd say it's a toss up between the recent revival of Once on this Island and the 2009 production of Hair. So as we talk about professional recordings, let's Let's lay some groundwork. Here are some things to keep in mind. A pro shot is a professionally filmed, legally distributed recording of an onstage show. The musical or play is performed live on stage and then recorded. A bootleg is an illegal recording of a show, usually secretly taken by an audience member. A lot of people interchangeably use the words pro shot or movie or film, so for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and define movie as this version of Into the Woods, not this version. This version's a pro shot, this version's a movie. Another thing thing to keep in mind is that Hamilton is the exception, not the rule. What do I mean by that? In terms of popularity, sellability, cultural permeation, demand, and of course the money. I mean, it's one of the shows that quite literally broke our industry. If you don't remember that whole debacle, check that out. It is insane. Where I'm going with this is think of Hamilton as like a Titanic or an Avengers Endgame, a giant money-making cultural shift. So the number one question on everyone's mind is of course, why don't we have more pro shots? The simple answer, money. But let's go ahead and break this down into two main sections, financials and mentality. So first thing first, when it comes to financials, pro shots are really expensive to shoot. Like if your show is on the brink of closing due to financial reasons, there is no way you can feasibly afford this. The reason that Hamilton got a pro shot is because the lead producers made so much money that they were able to pay for it themselves. And it's not just the expense of hiring a crew and getting the camera equipment and the sound equipment and the editors, it's also everything else that goes into making a pro shot. It's the legal stuff, it's the rights, it's the intellectual property. And then of course you have the actors. Now you're dealing with multiple different acting unions. You've got AEA, the Actors' Equity Association, which takes care of stage actors, and then you've got SAG-AFTRA, which basically covers everything else. Specific contracts have to be written up for rehearsals and performances because each show is treated on an individual basis. It's not a cookie cutter situation. For example, certain shows like Legally Blonde on MTV had a final amount of times that the show could be aired on television written into the contract. But if you're releasing something on DVD to be purchased by the public, then it becomes even more complicated. So it's the money to make all of that happen, plus the actual filming, plus the legal fees. So I think that's where a lot of the confusion is coming from in terms of the frustration toward the New York Library archives. If you didn't know, they actually record most Broadway shows, but only for archival purposes, not to be distributed. That decision isn't even in their hands. But something kind of neat is that you can actually go in and watch that footage if you have a legitimate reason to do so. They're also working on a new plan that would allow you to screen that footage in schools for educational purposes. I just kind of wish that we had more details and like exact numbers about these decisions and how much everything costs because I think that would help us as fans understand the choices a little better. Like when it's so amorphous and we just keep getting told it's really expensive, sorry, it makes us feel kind of bad because it's like, are you sure that you can't make something more accessible to the people who love it? So I think a little more transparency would be really helpful. I know that that's probably not gonna happen and we're not owed anything, but I, I think it would help quell some of our frustration. Something I did learn recently though from a really interesting New York Times article is that it costs 
five to 10 times more money to produce a pro recording here in the United States than it does overseas. They were created with distribution in mind, so that's why we have so much fantastic British theater available. Additionally, a pro shot can count as a movie. So depending on the contracts, if the film rights have already been sold, they might not even have the option to make a pro shot. And there's big money available in movie deals. Let's keep with the Lynn theme since Hamilton is the whole reason we're discussing this right now. Let's talk about In the Heights, one of my absolute personal favorite musicals, but a much more middle of the road show in terms of popularity. The film rights for that musical sold for a reported $50 million. So if you're the decision maker and your options are take a huge gamble, put up a whole bunch of money up front, hope that people like your pro shot, and then still decide to buy tickets to the show after the fact, or make a ton of money by selling those movie rights, you now have a movie of your musical, you get a ton of press, and tons of smaller community regional educational theaters want to produce your show to capitalize off of the movie, and then you get performance rights money. I will not miss that phase when literally every single theater announced that they were going to produce Mamma Mia. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a business. And that kind of segues into our second section. Let's talk about the mentality, the thought process behind why pro shots don't happen. So let's say, ideal situation. Your show is doing well financially, you can definitely afford to shoot a pro shot, you own your own rights, the fans desperately want one. So why does it still not happen? Short answer, again, money. The argument being that if they produce and release a pro shot, it'll ultimately lead to lower ticket sales. And the rebuttal to that is people watch bootlegs and still want to go to the theater. You know, they see a movie adaptation or a pro shot and that gets them even more excited about the show. And personally, I think that they're both valid points. I think it really depends on the potential audience member and how likely they were to see a musical in the first place. You know, we need to view this through the lens of a casual fan. Broadway producers aren't trying to convince theater kids to go see a show because they already have our business. They want the people who might not see a show or the person who's only going to see one show and they want it to be theirs. I think that's the audience they're afraid of losing. And that's something that I have very mixed feelings about. While I understand that this is a business and you need to make the fiscally sound decision, it's really disheartening to me the amount of musicals that we could potentially make accessible. There are so many shows that go underappreciated because the people who could have loved them or could have been changed by them just never get a chance to access them. It excludes the people who don't have the money or have the ability to go see this show. And I think that's a really big problem and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Sorry if that got really deep, uh, but it's something that's been on my mind. I'm very dehydrated. Let's, let's just drink some water. So let's touch a little bit on bootlegs. Bootlegs are again recordings of shows taken by an audience member and if you didn't know, it is super illegal to record a Broadway show. I don't just mean shows on Broadway, I also mean West End, national tours, stuff like that. A lot of fans have turned to bootlegs because pro shots are so rare and theater can be so inaccessible and they just want to see the thing they love. I would love to hear your opinion on bootlegs because I think both sides of the argument are valid, which I'm about to lay out, but I think we also need a better solution. So in favor of bootlegs, people who normally couldn't see the show can. Maybe you live too far away or you can't afford to see it. Maybe the show happened a long time ago. Maybe you wanted to see a specific performance by an understudy, a swing, a standby. You can't always predict when those actors will be going on. Ultimately, you're democratizing the theatrical experience and making it available to everyone, not just people who have the money to do so. The argument against bootlegs is is of course that they're illegal, they can be dangerous for the actors, they can be annoying for fellow audience members. And then another piece that I feel like doesn't get discussed enough is the lack of respect for our industry from the outside public. And what I mean by that is that we already have such a problem with artists not being taken seriously as a business. Like the amount of times that I've heard some idiot go, I mean, if you love your art so much, then why do you have to get paid for it? Why do you need to get money? Just do it for free. Because 
I have bills, Jared? You know, this is something that we spend our lives and our savings training for. This is our job. So if we in our own industry don't respect each other as working artists, why should anyone else? So all of that being said, if we had more pro shots, do I think that bootlegs would cease to exist? No. But do I think the demand for them would be lower? It could be recorded in a way that's safer for the performers, less distracting to the audience members, and the artists involved could be paid for their work? Absolutely. So let's discuss the future. Overall, I am so unbelievably happy that Disney purchased the rights to stream Hamilton. You know, Disney is a trailblazer. They are a massive, recognizable company. I'm really hoping that maybe this can help other companies warm up to the idea to produce pro shots. Maybe they can even go into it as partners and help with some of that upfront investment and shoulder some of that financial burden. Or just in general, knowing that there are potential buyers for your pro shot to be distributed, that might help open up the industry a little more. I am really hoping that this is a good start. I also wanted to give you guys some ideas and some places to check out if you want to watch theater, if you're trying to fill that Broadway-sized hole in your heart, as I often am. You can check out All Arts. I'll link their app down below. It's totally free and they have fantastic theater programming. I've worked with them in the past, but this is not sponsored. I genuinely love All Arts and I watch their programming pretty frequently. Check out The Shows Must Go On. It's a YouTube channel run by Andrew Lloyd Webber's company. They have pro shots free to stream on YouTube, but usually only for one weekend. You've got subscription streaming services like Broadway HD, Broadway On Demand, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, but keep in mind, all of those are behind a paywall. Great performances on PBS, that pro shot of Light in the Piazza is my absolute favorite thing ever. Also, shameless plug, my channel. I talk a ton about theater here on my main channel. Over on my vlog channel, I've got New York vlogs, backstage tours, show reviews, lots of fun stuff. So if you're looking for more theatery content, check it out. You smell unbelievable. <laughs> Again, I want to hear your thoughts on all of this. Please let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video or if you want more like it in the future, give this one a big thumbs up. It really, really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!